Hello, this is Frank Keeney, and I'm going to share with you some some real discoveries I found with uh, doing Facebook video ads, which have completely changed the way I do e-commerce on Facebook. Now, the first thing I'd like you to do sometime, maybe tonight or sometime soon, is turn on your television to a broadcast channel where they, there's commercials, not Roku or Amazon or uh, Netflix, but someplace that has commercials. The next time a commercial comes on, then uh, I want you to mute the volume and watch the first commercial and the next few commercials with no sound and just see how, you know, look at the, that ad in a different way. Because the reason why I, I want you to do this is because on Facebook video ads, almost nobody ever li listens to the sound. So in, in, when I've calculated some of my, and looked over some of my statistics on my Facebook video ads, I see 92% uh, of the people that watch my video ads never play the sound. So with the, the Facebook ads, the sound is not really critical. Now, but I want to make sure that we understand exactly how, how to make them effective. So Facebook video ads, they should not be made like television commercials. They should show off a product. Uh, but they should not be polished and all perfect like a TV ad with dialogue, a narrator. Um, you can have that, but 92% of your uh, target audience will never hear any of the narration. I typically just put a piece of um, some nice music in the background. So that's number one. The, the sound isn't really critical. The number one most important thing that you do in a video ad is in that first three seconds, the first three to seven seconds, you need to show off how terrific that product is. So just like if you're running an image in a link post or a photo post where that image is really, really critical, the same thing needs to be done in a video for that first three to seven seconds because at around... Um, Oh, around seven, depending on what your, who your audience is and what you're showing, somewhere in the seven to, set to, to 10 seconds or 15 seconds, you lose half of your viewers because people are just scrolling through. So I wanna, I, what I typically see in a video is they'll show the wrong thing first. And that's tip, so the wrong thing to show is maybe the, the product unassembled or start assembling it from the very beginning and then show, show off the finished product later on, you need to reverse that. Show the, f the finished product or how it's used right from the very, very beginning. And then, you know, maybe about seven seconds or 12 seconds later on, have a little teaser piece of text at the bottom that says, hey, keep watching to see how we put this, this thing together. And then when you, if there's some you know, time-consuming assembly, just speed that up so it looks um, really good. Now, typically, I'm going to show you my studio that everybody can put together to make a video ad. This is a no-no-brainer. So putting together an ad for uh, putting together a video is really easy, and you probably have all, you, you may already have everything you need, need to create a, an ad. And I'm a little bit, little bit, I'm going to show you exactly how I filmed uh, or, or recorded all my ads. And that I've sell, you know, with these ads, with just things I already had, I have sold tens and tens of thousands of products. Well, I don't know. It's probably a lot more than that. In just the last three months, just doing it just like this. So typically what I do is I'll shoot, uh, d you know, depending on the product, I'll shoot anywhere from five to uh, 10 or maybe more short little clips, you know, close up of what it is. And then when I assemble the ad, I'll edit, just use a video editor and put it all together in very quick edits. So I may have these, um, 
you know, ten, you know, five or ten videos that I shot on and that I shot, and then I'll edit them together, but sh- and then shorten them so it's really tight. So people have real short attention spans, and my videos are typically anywhere from 30 seconds to um, to a minute and a half. So length, I, I like to have them a little bit longer, and then you want to render the video square. So not landscape, like you see on your flat screen TV. You want it to be completely square because that will take up more space when the ad shows up. So your, your product takes up more space on the screen and you can show off your product even better that way. So it will actually uh, show it, even though when you, you may need to learn a little bit more about your video editor to make them square, but um, once you have that working, it's a much more effective ad. I've actually tested, done uh, testing, and my ads that were landscape um, performed much better than an image ad or, or just a regular link post image. But when I made it square and I tested uh, the same uh, targeting and everything, I got like a, uh, approximately 15% improvement in my, uh, in my metrics. So cost per sale or cost per acquisition or whatnot, basically the cost per impression drops. But here, I'm going to show you wh- how I do my uh, videos. I'll show you my little uh, studio. So I'm just going to tilt the camera down. I hope I've, you can see the whole thing. But I've got this on my coffee table, and I think... Most, well, one of my videos I filmed on one of these tables just like this. So I'm going to tilt it down so you can see this. And there it goes. Let's see if we can get the whole thing in here. So it's basically a selfie stick attached to a tripod. So this here is just the top part of this is a selfie stick with a telescopic uh, stick like they normally have. But this one at the very bottom is threaded on the inside so I can attach it to a tripod. Now this is a little spotting scope tripod so it's really small. But if you've done any photography or anything in the past, um, or you could just go to order one on Amazon, get a, a tripod for a camera, and attach your selfie stick. So, I mean, you may already have one of these. I mean, I think I've used this selfie stick more for doing... Uh, video ads than I ever have for taking selfies. So this is a real quick way to make them. And then of course it you can it's so typically like this tripod's really small and the selfie stick is small so it's so portable. But I've made I mean just like right here I've got the I've got something on my table like I would be doing a product demo. And then I've got my selfie stick with the the phone on it just attached and just start uh, creating your videos, then copy them off from the, and you just take them off the phone, edit them down, and you're done. So I know I had a couple more things I wanted to bring up, but the number one thing is that first three seconds, the next four seconds, it's so, so critical on your video to uh, have that just right, so that works, and so, because, realize that, you know, remember as we're running our ads, those ads show up in people's uh, news feed and they're just scrolling by. So if you don't catch their attention in those first uh, three seconds or so, then you're just, you're going to lose them. Now, the other thing that works real well also is inside of um, audiences is to create an engagement audience from your video. So I typically create um, the, all of them. So you've got people that have watched uh, 95% of your video, people that have watched 75% of your video, and 25 and so on. So typically, you know, typically when you run a, like a photo post or a link post, you don't have... Um, you, know, you can retarget people that visit your site but you can't just retarget the people that view your ad. Now, that's another big advantage of doing running video ads because you can create these engagement audiences. So even if they never clicked on your ad, 
Perhaps they just watched the video. And typically those that watch longer, watch more of the video, are more likely to convert into sales. So what I typically do, I'll create all the different types of uh, engagement audiences for the video, the 95%, 75%, and the 25%, and, and the others. But I typically test the two, the 75% and the 95%, and those are typically the two audiences that convert the best. So my, my, typically what my practice is, is to create those engagement audiences, uh, and I have a the, the five-day uh, five window on those. So they, um, I don't want it to be too long because typically, you know, if they have a bot in the first few days, they're typically not going to buy. So those engagement audiences, along with retargeting, those engagement audiences can, can really uh, convert very, very well. So let's see here. Um, so for like background music, I always put some sort of music in the background. I get some stock uh, stock music or something like that from some place, but the um, you know you can it, uh, sometimes your video editor will include that. Now, as far as video editors, I mean, you if you know if there's one that you know how to use, just use that one. Don't make it too complicated. Uh, it don't shouldn't take that much time. And now I'm so typically if you're doing say for example you're drop shipping from AliExpress and you don't have the product. Well, now's a good time. If you've got products that are proven sellers, you know, start ordering samples for yourself so you can create those videos. Now, I'm also, I also do videos where I take just the static images and build out some sort of a slideshow or something. Now, those aren't quite as good, but they do work and they can, uh, they can perform very well also. Let me just make sure I wanna cover all of my notes here. Um, all right, so yeah, the um, now typically I do have text within the video. So when I want to highlight something, I uh, have a call to action. And yeah, Brian's just posted some, some stock music. So definitely m make sure you're not using any copyrighted music because Facebook will detect that. So that's very, very important. So Brian posted freestockmusic.com and let's and let's see I think I've covered just about anything I don't know if there's any questions about building building videos I'd be happy to answer them but what I typically see when I'm uh, critiquing somebody's video and they show it to me then usually the what I see is that they're not showing off the product in a big way to start off with so that's that's like number one thing um, because if you don't get them in the first few seconds, then you're not going to have them at all. And then the other thing is, is now I'm going to give you some examples about what, in my testing, what I found. So when I first started experimenting with video ads, and I, you know, I, have, I started with a, you know, a product I was selling with a, either a photo post or a link post. And then, you know, of course, you've got your, each of those, you'll have a cost per sale. And if, then if you look in your metrics, you can see your cost per impression and so forth. So what, what um, uh, my Facebook rep always reminds me when I talk to him, he always says, you know, Frank, remember that fa the most important thing for Facebook is that the, um, that the users have a good experience. And he, it, I mean, it seems like when I talk to him, he always repeats that to me. He says, the, that's real important, the main thing. So if you can put something kind of fun in your video or make it, that will actually give it more in, uh, get more engagement and so forth. Now, now, along with this, now what he's really talking about, I think from an advertising point of view, we're, we're, we you know, call that engagement. So there, you've got a group of people who are liking it and sharing it and clicking through and so forth all those things that make it a good user experience. If, if that video stops in front of someone and, they, and they leave, Facebook knows where that, uh, that uh, video is showing, and now if someone stops to watch it, Facebook knows that too. And you're going to be, you'll be rewarded with lower cost per impression, which can help you win the auction for that ad space. 
So the fact, the fact that your video has more engagement or is, and is more engaging with the Facebook audience can make a, a, an enormous difference in getting more impressions. And the end result will be lower cost per impression. And when you're selling products, that means your cost per purchase will go down. And my experience with this from universally across any of my successful products is an image or a link post versus a, a properly done video. The video will typically cut the cost per, person, cost per purchase in half versus a link post or an image post. And remember, when I talked about rendering that video square, now I run that as a, li a video link post and it's square. And that, and that takes up the same space as a photo post, like a 1200 by 1200. It takes up the same amount of real estate on a, um, on a mobile or a desktop. So that's real important to take up, take up more space. It gets more attention. And then with the engage, with a properly done video, you can have more engagement, which basically means that people on Facebook like it and Facebook will reward you. Um, that's, and that's pretty much all I have in my notes to uh, go through. But I want to be clear, just, um, you know, may, I know there's a bunch of editors out there to do videos. Like I know Vegas is popular and uh, on the, um, and I just use Camtasia because typically what I, I mean, my background with videos on the computer is doing training. And so Camtasia is a terrific product to record screens. And then it has an editor in it as well. In the, um, it comes with an editor which is decent. And that's the one I know, so it's just the one I use. It's not the best editor, I know that, but it's the one I know how to use. So that's what I recommend. You know, if, you know, if there's something you know how to use, use that one. And try to figure out how to render it square so it just takes up more space when you run that ad. And then what I do is I run it, uh, the video, as a link post video. And so that way it has the call to action below the video. Again, then, then you know, your ad is taking up more space when it's coming through. So um, that's, that's what, uh, I mean, I've just seen such an enormous difference. I've taken some things that were barely profitable uh, with a link, regular image link post or a photo post and make them into a, do a demo of the product and show it off. Uh, and that would um, really, um, it made a huge difference. One of the other things I did is, at, I mean, uh, often with a, a product that I don't have, I'll use available images to test it. And then, you know, if it's a more, you know, maybe a more technical product or something a little more complex. And what I do is I really watch for the feedback in the comments to see what kinds of questions are asked about the product. And then what I do is when I make the video, I answer all the questions. I sh so for uh, one product, for example, I showed off how it works and how you know neat it is, and then then I actually then I because people in my with the when I ran the image ad, people asked how to clean the product. So when I did the video ad, at about uh, about seven or eight seconds into the video, I put some text at the bottom that said, "Keep watching." for cleaning instructions. Well, guess what? I got people to watch longer and then now people were sharing it and and 30 and that, that video um, I'm getting um, around 30% of my reach is organic on a, on a website conversion ad. It's like for me that's uh, totally uh, you know mind blowing to get that amount of shares and likes and comments and so forth. So, um, yeah, just leave me um, any questions below, and I'll try to do one of these in here on a regular basis. And everybody have a great weekend.